Welcome to my sewing room. The theme for the show today is lattice work, and oh, do we have some really interesting types of lattice work for you. This little French dress, which really is a very tailored French dress, is made out of broadcloth, a polycotton blend, and has the lattice work made with two rows of Swiss edging, oh, excuse me, French edging. And then there's some little bullion rosebuds everywhere the edging crosses, and this goes down to the waist, and then it just has a plain skirt. Now for your younger little daughter or granddaughter, this is a really sweet little blue batiste Swiss dress, and the lattice work is on the sleeves. The lace is simply zigzagged down, and then it crisscrosses over. Isn't that a pretty sleeve? Once again, a very tailored and plain skirt. Another French dress with lattice work on the bib. Pretty lattice work and then a little extra decorative stitching and once again some bullion rosebuds but this time done by machine. And then there's some, also some sweet little machine embroidery on the, the ribbon that goes around the waist. Another very tailored look for lattice work is the vest that is our pattern for this series, which by the way I am wearing. And this one is a version with bias strips stitched down in the front and on each, or rather on the two front sides. And then there is all, that we have all kinds of really pretty machine trim, which makes lattice work by machine on the inside of the vest also. Come with me to the technique boards and I'll share with you just how easy it is to get a really interesting look with lattice work. Lattice work is truly one of the easiest techniques that I've ever done. To begin with, one of the most important, well, I guess the most important thing, really is that you, is that you mark it correctly. Now, I have drawn two lines here that intersect, and then I'll take my quilter's ruler, and I will just line it up, and actually you'll line it up along here and along here. And then I will use, I'm using a water-soluble pencil, but you can use whatever you want to use as far as the marking goes. I, I make a line there, and then I move over and line it up one more time and make a line here. And that is one of the keys, is getting your lines correctly drawn. Here is a, a grid, a typical grid that I would use for lattice work with all the lines drawn. Now this lattice work, it's done with lace, and I've simply placed all of these pieces first, and then these pieces came next. And the stitching was really easy, too. I just simply zigzagged both sides, the bottom ones first, and then the top ones next. Now, if you would like a more Celtic look, that means over and under look, then you can place your laces when you're working on the grid, the one up here. You can go over with this piece of lace and under with that piece of lace over with that piece of lace, and that makes a real pretty look too. You can also use just absolutely ribbon, silk ribbon, polyester ribbon. Actually, it's almost unlimited what you can do with, uh, with lattice, lattice work. This is a really fun one, rickrack. Gosh, we used to use rickrack all the time. Well, let's do it again. Using rickrack, this makes a really interesting looking one that's very casual and a lot of fun to do. This particular piece for lattice work is done with a bias tape that I made using my bias tape maker, and it is stitched down on this fabric, once again, just using a zigzag. Now, if you want to really fancy it up, then let's go with a couple of pieces of lace. Of course, I'm going to probably drop all these. A couple of pieces of lace, zig zigzag them together, and then put your Swiss Batiste bias tape over it, and when you stitch it down, it really makes a very nice look with the laces on both sides. And I really like the ecru and the pink as well as the, uh, in conjunction with the lace. Now come on over here, we've got even more lattice lace work surprises for you. I think this is one of the prettiest pillows that I have ever seen. I'm gonna get my little shish kebab stick to point out here. The little silk ribbon roses by machine in the middle and the little lazy daisy flowers. The fagoting that has the silk ribbon run through it, and this is done on pink silk dupioni. Now, how is this one done? Well, I trace off my grid, as I showed you a few minutes ago, and then we simply come in and lay the fagoting down, pin it several different places, and put the fagoting across over here, and now we're ready to sew on that particular one. 
How do you do those bias strips that we did out of the Swiss Batiste a few minutes ago? Well, I used to be afraid of bias strips, and now I'm not afraid anymore, so I'm going to show you. The, here is the selvage edge. Here is the torn edge of my fabric. I'm going to bring the torn edge, top edge, over to the selvage edge, and it forms a piece of fabric like this. I'm going to put my quilter's rule down and trace it off and simply cut a piece of fabric, and that makes a bias strip. Now, how do I make, or rather it makes a bias, well, it makes one kind of bias strip. Now, I've got to make a folded bias strip. This is the neatest little gizmo right here. It's called a bias strip maker. I don't know exactly what it looks like. It looks almost like fishing tackle of some kind. Anyway, you cut a long strip on the end so the fabric will go through it easily. Then you begin to thread it through this little bias tape maker, and as you thread it through, you can see it folds it in half. Now I'm going to take my iron and press it down as I go. And then I'm going to pull it through a little bit more and then press it down some more. And that way my bias strip is complete. Now after I shape my bias strips onto the fabric, I will pin them. And you can use a zigzag, but actually what I'm going to use here is a blind hem. And I've got the blind hem foot, which has this little blade right here. It makes it really easy to keep it straight. You can use all different kinds of stitches. Now, I love to keep my little shish kebab stick handy. Anytime I'm doing any sewing, just simply hold it in place. And then if the machine sews over this wooden shish kebab stick, it most likely will not damage my fabulous machine. If I put a metal pin there and begin to sew over that, it very likely could damage my machine. And so I like to use something that my machine is protected. Actually, my needle might not even break if I hit this wooden shish kebab stick. Now that is absolutely all there is to doing lattice work. You see how easy it is? You just simply put one a strip on top of the other and sew them down. And I have a vest where I've used ribbons on lattice work. Next, would you come back to the technique boards with me for another interesting idea concerning lattice work? This is one of my favorite versions of our vest, which is the pattern for the series. This is the button on off sleeve version of the vest. You can see it looks like a jacket now, but then when I unbutton some of the buttons, you can see just a really neat little vest lined in bright colors and lattice work in very bright colors. This lattice work is very easy to make also. You have your lattice bias tape maker, so you're going to make your bias strips, all different wonderful bright colors, cut out the uh, front of your vest, apply your bias, no, excuse me, the bias strips are not on the front. These are the buttons which are going to go on the front of the vest, both buttoning up the front of the vest and buttoning the sleeves on. Now these wonderful bias strips, so colorful, go on the sleeve. This is a sleeve pattern. So you pin your colorful bias strips on the sleeves, zigzag them down, and button your colorful sleeves right onto your vest, whenever you would like to make a jacket out of your vest. Now the vest that I have on is another one of our patterns. I just have to show you this pretty lining. See it has a really nice lining uh, done in ecru and black. Very simple to do. Here is my vest front. I've taken strips of ribbon. Actually, it's two strips of ribbon, an ecru and a black, and they're stitched together using a beautiful decorative machine stitch. Then when it's time to finish off the edges, I'm going to take this black tape right here. It's really sort of a pretty yarn lace. I will place it just like this and zigzag it, and voila, my vest is finished. You know, vests are one of the nicest things for everybody to wear, and I promise you all sizes, all shapes, all heights can find a vest that looks really nice on them. And next, I have a silk ribbon embroidery stitch for you. I am so pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has authored the book, Colonial Inspirations, and Beverly, it is so good to have you here. Thank you, Martha. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Today, I'm going to show your viewers how we're going to make this very simple little fuchsia. It's a very suitable one for clothing as well because it's a very firm one. We have it also here on this seam ripper, the scissor case, and on the pin cushion. 
I'm now going to show you how to make this little stitch. We have first a straight stitch, two stitches right beside each other, then a stitch on an angle, a little higher above, a little longer, a second stitch. Then we couch it down with a piece of floss, then we put the stamens on the end here. A little bud here, simply a straight stitch, a piece across. So it's very, very simple. Just first of all, that straight stitch. Then this long stitch at an angle. You can see how this is above and a little longer. Then the couching stitch and just pull it in just a fraction like this and then the pistol stitches that go below which is simply a French knot on the end of a stalk. You'll see here that they're really very simple and very easy to do. Now I'm also going to show you how to make the pieces that go inside this hussive. You, this is, I've blown it up just a little bit to make it easy for you to see. You'll see stitching, I've stitched the opening on both sides to make, to keep the shape there. I've marked the center, I've divided it into sections. You will then do your embroidery. We will, then I've got a piece here, I've done that, I'm all ready to go. Notice I've marked the centers there. I'm now going to buttonhole stitch around here. I'm going to do it on both sides and ladies, it is important, and gentlemen, it is important that you do have your buttonhole stitch matching because when you've done that, then you are going to whip it all the way around. It's purely decorative, but it does give a lovely pique edge to it and I've used a second colour for my whipping, a slightly thicker stitch. So I'm going to bring this big fat needle through, but there's one other thing I wish to tell you and that's this. You will see my knot is here. It's a big knot rather than at the end. It means that when you pull it through, you are left with tails and those tails are used to stitching it on. Take it over and pull it quite firmly bring it through and continue on until you have one that looks like this. Now I've brought another lot of thread through the middle. You will see that I have then done a spider's web. Very simple, just forward two and back one. So forward two, back one. And you will continue doing that, keeping them nice and tight so that they, until you get them to the size that you want. Now the next step is this little scissor case. You will see I have taken a piece of chamois leather like this and I have buttonholed and stitched across the top, stitched it around. You'll see it's a slightly smaller. I will do the same on this. Remember buttonhole stitch across the top there. This is, then goes down and a little ladder stitch all the way around coming from the back to stitching this edge down and holding it firm. Also then make a loop across the top here and buttonhole it to make it to hold the scissors in. Now the last step is very simple. Obviously I've put right sides to right sides, stitched it through and I've come round but I want you to notice that I've left a very large hole in here. Now the reason for that is you will see that there is no pumpkin pin cushion at this point. And so we're now going to take this, put it on here, take these cords through to the back, attach them firmly and then in underneath we will have a row of hand stitching around in underneath there which will then hold it very very firm. It won't wobble and last of all stitch it together and you will now have a beautiful hussive which looks like that. 
Beverly, that is absolutely beautiful. You know, you and I were sharing earlier that if you have two daughters and a son, though, you maybe should make three of these husses <laughs> because somebody will fight over who's going to get the husse. Well, it is truly a <laughs> gift of love. Now, I have a really nice home decorating project for you. To me, there's absolutely nothing any more beautiful than lovely linens on the table. Now, if you happen to have a little bit of pink in your china, I think you'd like this pink table runner, but the good news is you could do this lovely table runner and put any color taffeta behind it. I think this is an elegant way to set a table. It's so pretty against the dark wood. All right, the table runner is pink that we've chosen this time. The laces are stitched on organdy and the lace insertion comes down and there's a really neat V also made out of the lace and the flat lace edging is stitched on here and then gathers around the corner so you'll have plenty of fullness. It is very easy to shape laces and the lace V or the miter is what I'm going to share with you now. First of all I draw the miter off. I have the V right here so I'm going to put one side down. I'm going to come down put a pin, and I, I have to have a lace shaping board, I have to have a board of some kind to stick this into. I put a pin at the bottom, and I'm going to put a pin at the top. Now I'm going to fold this lace back on itself, remove the top tip pin, put it through both layers, and a perfect miter is folded in. Now to stitch this lace down, to the organdy, I'm going to use a wing needle pin stitch, and I am going to use stabilizer. Now, if you do not have a pin stitch on your sewing machine, it is perfectly all right to just zigzag it down. It is not necessary to use a wing needle and have a pin stitch. But this stitch is very, very elegant. It looks like the old-fashioned hem stitching. And if you have this stitch, it's always very nice to use it, I think. And I'm using a 100 wing needle. Can you see the little holes out behind there? Isn't that pretty? Okay, now that I have stitched my laces down, it's time to put the whole thing together. I have the organdy here and my file back here. I stitch all the way around the edge, around the edges, and I stitch on the V, and of course I'll have to trim the V, and then I leave a little space to turn the whole thing right side out. Now, in case you thought I had a bias binding there, I do not. That is made by making the organdy a little bit more narrow than the file. And then when I turn it right side out, I press it and that really pretty seam allowance shows. All right, here is my finished piece and I'm going to butt the flat lace up to this after I press it really well and zigzag. And then once again, I'm going to have plenty of fullness right here around the corners and that just makes it look pretty. It also makes it lay nice and flat when you put it on your table. And next I have a really elegant doll dress for you. My little doll has the absolute most precious dress you've ever seen on today. She's all ready for a party it looks like to me. The little plain yoke is the fabric with netting over it, a little gathered uh, ruffle around her neck, and then some pretty teal bows. Now this dress is actually a dress and an overdress. The little uh, skirt, let me kind of hold it up to show you, there's a netting skirt that covers her pretty underskirt and that has pin, double needle pin tucks, lace, and, and straight lace around the bottom, and her sleeves are just a little uh, piece of netting. Oh my, they're so pretty, it almost comes down to make a long sleeve. Now the pin tucks are one of the features that I really like most about heirloom sewing. If you do not have a pin tuck foot, you can still make double needle pin tucks by just using your regular zigzag foot. Now I have a pin tuck foot and I'm using either a 1.6 or a 2.0 double needle. Now I'm guiding the pin tuck foot along the edge of the gathered lace that I have already uh, stitched onto the bottom of the dress and this is the first stage. I put the lace on the bottom and then I very slowly uh, sew the pin tucks around so I can go along this curve and guide it really nicely because the only guide I'm using is just the edge of the pin tuck which goes along the edge of that gathered lace. Can you see that pretty pin tuck in the back? This is really easy to do. It takes a little time, but another reason I like pin tucks so much is they don't cost any extra money. You just have to put some of your time in it, and they really do make an elegant treatment for heirloom sewing. 
Okay, that nice little pin tuck is just standing up so pretty. Okay, let's go on with the rest of the dress. After I have done the row of gathered edging, I do one pin tuck and as really as many as you want. We have one, two, three, four, five. And then I put on the next row of lace. I pin it and then I sew it down. You can zigzag or wing needle entre dough. And here is what the skirt looks like after I've done my skirt treatment. Now I'm going to need to cut away the fabric from behind the gathered lace on the bottom and I'll need to cut away the fabric from behind the lace that is stitched onto uh, the skirt as we go up. And here's one more row of lace that will need to be cut away also. Now then, as you, as you can see, all of the work is done on this bottom skirt. Okay, what are we gonna do for the overlay? It's really very simple. Here's the skirt piece. I'm going to bring the gathered lace in move it up a little bit. I'm not going to put it right on the very edge. I'll lay it down, moving up about the length or the width of the lace, and I will zigzag it down, and then once again I will go underneath and trim away the excess skirt piece. However, with the netting you really wouldn't have to if you didn't want to. Now won't you come along with me to my attic? <laughs> I really love it when I find something very unusual to bring to the show and share with you. This christening dress is really a christening dress or it may be a coat. It's a little bit of both. This has, it is made out of a heavy pique, very tailored top. And let me just show you first that it opens up in the front and the back is closed. So it really is more like a coat and you would have to wear it like a slip, a christening slip underneath it. It has pleats on the front, so it's very tailored, Swiss paneling, but this is the most special embroidery, every bit done by hand. The little scrolls, and actually, the main part of the embroidery is two outline stitches with little French knots in between, and then beautiful, beautiful padded satin stitch. Now, when it comes down to the bottom of the skirt, it really spreads out in this beautiful design. Absolutely magnificent with its padded satin stitches, the little stem stitches, leaves, pretty flowers, and that same scroll with the two stem stitches and the French knots in between. And the embroidery does go all the way around the back of the dress. For my sewing from the heart for you today, I have a letter from Diane Haddam from Arlington, Washington. Diane writes, Dear Martha, I work for the Boeing Company, the Everett Plant. I am building focal for a community Christmas project called Adopt a Stocking. The company provides us with large felt stockings. After that, I purchase all appliques, fusible webbing, decorative paints, ribbon, and thread. I organize a group of volunteers who decorate them, and I sew them all. After that, other people fill them up. My group averages about 100 stockings per year and the Everett site about 3,000. The stockings are sent to community agencies for needed children. Uh, my emphasis on this project is for everyone to do it from the heart. Sincerely, Diane Haddam. Diane, this is such a wonderful project that you and the other employees at the Boeing Company and Washington State are doing. My goodness, 3,000 stockings. That's a lot of stockings. And you know what I can't help but think about, Diane, and for all of you other wonderful people out there in Washington that are doing this, I just keep thinking about those 3,000 children that will have a stocking, a handmade stocking, filled with wonderful goodies this Christmas. And yet I kind of would be willing to bet, Diane, that you and the other employees get the most pleasure of all out of it. Thank you so much for writing, and I hope those of you that are so fortunate as to be able to sew, and those of you that have a sewing machine, will be looking around for some kind of a project from the heart. Thank you so much for joining me on my sewing room today. I hope you've had as much fun as I have, and I'd like to invite you to come back next time.